Hey everyone, Dr. O'Neill here. I want to welcome you to Grow Gray Matter. This is part two in my medical terminology video series that's going to cover all the terms you need to know to conquer the nervous system so you can quit getting bogged down with terms and start to understand the ideas and apply what you're learning. Let's get to it. First, we have moto, which means moving. So a few examples to help this stick. Think motorcycle. So a cycle that's motorized and really moving. Think promotion. If you get a promotion, so motion or moto is moving, pro means up or forward. So if you're getting a promotion, you're moving up or forward in your business. Then obviously what matters here is the motor nerve. So motor nerves are what allow for movement, for things to move. So your motor unit is a motor nerve and then all the muscle fibers that it innervates or controls. So moto means moving. Next we have sense or sense, which means feeling. So a few terms to help that stick. A sensation. A sensation is something that you feel. Another term, think consensus. So a consensus is when people are feeling the same thing. So con means to come together. So they're coming together with the same feelings or same thoughts. That's a consensus. So the reason it matters here is, of course, your sensory nerves. Your sensory nerves are what allow you to feel. So sensory nerves carry information to your brain and spinal cord that tell you about the world around you so your brain and spinal cord can process this information and do something with it, which may actually mean doing nothing. And then we have your special sense organs. So we have tons of different types of sensory receptors. They can measure things like crude touch and vibration, you name it. But your special sense organs are going to be the ones involved in your special senses, like vision, taste, hearing, balance, etc. So a special sense organ is an organ that feels a special sense. So sense or sense means feeling. Real quick, what is your favorite word that uses one of these terms? What trick do you use to remember difficult terms like this? Leave a comment below to help your fellow students. And we will grow gray matter together. Okay, I want to talk about these next two terms separately and then put them together and kind of compare them. So the term afferent means to bring towards. So the afferent division of your nervous system is bringing information to your brain and spinal cord. So think about it. The, the information that's being brought to your brain is going to be your sensations. It's telling you, telling your brain what's going on in the world. Efferent means to carry off, to carry away. So efferent signals are going to travel from your brain to your fingers, toes, whatever. So afferent, think sensory, carrying information towards your brain and spinal cord. Efferent, think motor, carrying information away from your brain and spinal cord. If none of that helps you, let me give you a couple of tricks. A, afferent, comes before E, efferent, in the alphabet. You have to feel something before you respond to it. So afferent sensation comes first, efferent motor comes second. And then lastly, your afferent connections, the afferent division of your spinal cord has to arrive at the brain and spinal cord. So AA, afferent arrives. The efferent division of your nervous system has to exit the brain and spinal cord to go out to your muscles. So efferent exits, EE. -E. So that is afferent and efferent, which means to bring toward or to carry off. A lot there I know, but these are complex terms. All right, this one's going to be meaty too. We have neuroglia. So glia means glue. So your neuroglia 
are your nerve glue cells. These are not your neurons. The neurons are the functional unit of the nervous system that send and receive electrical impulses. The nerve glue, the glial cells, the neuroglial cells, they're the support cells. They're the cells that help your neurons do their job. Now, I want to run through each of the six types. I'll have a separate video where I cover these in detail, but I'm just looking at it from a terminology standpoint. So let's go ahead and look at them. So one, the first one we have is the astrocyte. So the astrocyte has that name because it's a star-like cell. Astrocytes are very important. They maintain the blood-brain barrier. They're basically the scaffolding that your brain and spinal cord are built on. They're actually the cells that feed your neurons. But for now, we're just looking at the terminology. Astrocytes are star-like cells. Next, we have ependymal cells. So ependyma means tunic. So these are going to be cells that line the spaces in your brain and spinal cord, like a tunic would line or cover your body. So these internal spaces of your brain and spinal cord would be your ventricles of the brain and the central canal of the spinal cord. So ependymal cells, they make, produce, recycle, and circulate cerebrospinal fluid, the fluid that actually fills those openings. So ependyma means tunic because these cells line all the internal cavities of your brain and spinal cord. Next you, next you have microglia. The word really just means small glue cells, but the microglia cells are really the immune system of your central nervous system. They clean up debris and can fight off pathogens. The last neuroglial cell of your central nervous system is called the oligodendrocyte. So site means cells, dendro means tree-like, and oligo means few. So this cell has a few tree-like branches, oligodendrocytes. These are going to be cells that use these branches to wrap around your neurons to insulate or myelinate them. So myelin is fatty insulation that allows your nerves to send signals much, much faster. So that's the oligodendrocyte. Now we have two glial cells or neuroglial cells of the peripheral nervous system, your sensory and motor nerves, etc. We have satellite cells. So the term satellite means in orbit. So satellite cells are actually around or in orbit around your peripheral nerves. And these are the cells that basically control and create the environment your peripheral nerves are in. And then lastly, we have Schwann cells. So in this series, I haven't used this term yet, but Schwann cells are an example of an eponym. So an eponym is a name that gives credit or pays homage to the discoverer or something like that. So Schwann cells don't tell us anything about what they do or what they look like. It's actually the German naturalist uh, Theodore Schwann is who they're named after. So you're actually seeing those being phased out. So just real quickly, like Eustachian tube is no longer technically correct. Um, the vas deferens is now called the ductus deferens. Uh, the fallopian tube is now called the uterine tube. They're actually trying to get rid of eponyms and other terms that don't make any sense. But the Schwann cell is the cell that actually myelinates or insulates your peripheral nerves. But that's an example of an eponym. Okay, so those are your neuroglial cells. Neuroglia means nerve glue. Real quick, before we get to our weird word of the day, I'd like to ask you a favor. Please like this video if you liked it. Share this video if you loved it. Leave a comment and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to continue on this journey with me so we can crush your coursework and you can grow gray matter. All right, let's get a little weird with it. If you've ever had a little too much to drink and you don't want to tell people that you're hungover, Try using the term vasalgia. Vasalgia comes from the word vase, which is Norwegian for uneasiness following debauchery, and alja, the Greek word for pain. So vasalgia means the same thing as hungover. Learning complex topics is hard. That's why they're called complex topics. But I hope this video showed you that I can help you, that I can lead you down the right path that we can tackle this topic together. One video at a time, one step at a time, one synapse at a time, until you grow gray matter.
Jurassic!